episode number 67 of the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. Welcome to the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. I'm Michelle, a fertility acupuncturist here to provide you with resources on how to create a wholesome approach to your fertility journey. Today, I welcome celebrity psychic Michelle White Dove. Michelle is the first legitimate psychic to prove her supernatural abilities by being tested on television. Filmed under the strict FCC guidelines to guarantee authenticity, Lifetime TV named her America's number one psychic, awarding her this title of distinction after she won America's Psychic Challenge, a competitive reality TV program. She is the most tested medium in America, having also been tested on the Sixth Sense International. Naturally gifted since childhood, Michelle has many God-given talents. These abilities enable her to connect with her guardian angels and spirit guides to give her clear and accurate information about personal issues, world events, and the future. She has a 98% accuracy rate with her readings. Michelle White Dove has been featured on TV around the globe in the HBO documentary No One Dies in Lilydale, a film that showcases her gifts. As an expert in her field, she has been featured on some of North America's most conservative shows. The Today Show interviewed by Matt Lauer, ABC TV's 190 North, CBS News, Fox News, WGN Superstation Morning News, PBS TV's Viewpoints, CTV News, Breakfast TV Canada, The Alan Combs Show, and NPR to discuss the reality of psychic abilities and after-death communication. She was also invited to give a reading to Patty Stanger, Bravo TV's Millionaire Matchmaker. I had the privilege to meet Michelle many years ago when my 14-year-old was only one. I went with my best friend and heard her speak and was in awe at what she was saying, especially for the question that I gave her. We all got to give her questions that I was able to actually book a session with her when I say this woman was right on the money. It was extremely impressive because you do hear a lot about mediums and you do see them a lot on TV, but she is so accurate. It's unbelievable. So when I reached back out to her, it was um, a memory that I had when I had seen her. She had mentioned the reservation of my daughter who wasn't born at the time. And she told me that there was a reservation of a soul on me and that I was going to get pregnant soon. And she described her in few words. But when I saw my daughter, I knew exactly what she was talking about. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But... It was just so amazing that I thought this would be such a great guest to have, and I'm so honored that she was able to make it. So get ready for a fascinating episode. So welcome to the podcast, Michelle. Thank you for having me. So we spoke about this in the pre-talk. I We just, we just had a whole conversation about how um, I met Michelle years ago, probably like 13 years ago because my daughter who's 14 now is one and I was blown away by everything that you, you were so right on just by looking at pictures. Now here's the crazy thing too, is the first time I met you was not at the reading. I met you at, um, I forget what it was called. It was a place where they had belly dancing, um, in Hollywood. Um, and it was like a, a spiritual shop. Right. And they also had belly dancing and you did a lecture and everybody wrote um, wrote in a piece of paper to you, like whatever it was they wanted or they shared pictures with you and you would look at the pictures and you would read whatever it was. Yes. And I wrote you because I didn't know, you know, I just had my child and I was kind of in between figuring out what I wanted to do with my life as far as just my purpose, as far as work goes. And I remember saying to you, what is my purpose or what kind of work should I do? And you told me you're going to be a fine healer. This is what I I remember it like it was yesterday. Oh, that's beautiful. 
And I was like, first of all, it was like the best thing ever that anybody can tell me because I always wanted to to do that. It was just like a yearning within me. And um, and then I, when I actually met with you, I asked you, should I go to acupuncture to study acupuncture? You, you were like, yes. <laughs> And I went back to school <laughs> and I studied acupuncture and now I specialize in fertility acupuncture and I started this fertility podcast. Oh, that's great. And so, yeah. And, and I remember, you know, there's pivotal moments and of course I met you for like a sporadic like moment, but that moment was so impactful, you know, it, it really impacted me. And I, it was like something that I really took to heart because you were so accurate with your reading. Oh, thank you. I mean, that means a lot. Yeah. Thank you. For and I read all your books. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fascinated by your mind and I'm just so excited. I can't wait for you to start sharing your story. Um, what's cool about you too, is that you have clear audience. Yes. Um, there's people who are clear audience where they hear things. There's people who are clairvoyant where they see yeah. things. There's people who are clear sen sentient when they feel things. You're like all I'm of across them. the board, very diversified in my gifts. It's in incredible. So share with us what your background is, how you first figured out that you had this gift and how you also navigated through this. Cause I'm sure when you're younger and you have this gift and nobody else sees what you see, it could be confusing. And, and uh, it, it never really was confusing yeah. for me because I was born with the gift. It, it took mm -hmm. me to about the age of eight to realize, Oh, my friends aren't seeing what I'm seeing or they're not talking about what I'm talking about. My parents are referring to me as a very unusual child. <laughs> 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 and so I was just really open about it until I think like junior high and high school, I kind of tried to shut the gift down, but it doesn't work that way. I don't have an off button, you know? And, and yeah. so I also had a near death experience at 18, a terrible car accident, head on collision where I lost family and friends. And also I was diagnosed uh, dead literally by the paramedics. Mm. But I was above the, the accident looking down and I couldn't believe how disconnected I was from what we call life, you know, our, our physical existence here and just knew, knew my way home, like the back of my hand. And that helped to mm -hmm. give me clarity and wisdom. And because my family was not religious or spiritual, I always would listen to what my angels said because I would find they always would get me through life as gracefully and as painlessly as possible and to support me. So that mm -hmm. was something internally that I always kept to myself. And then yet I started doing this work full time. Well, I was already doing the work when I had a salon because you're in people's energy, you know, holding their hands and their hair. So things right. would come right out of my mouth. Right. Some of my clients ran for the hills. Some would come back. <laughs> they couldn't get enough. <laughs> And so finally, I, I made a transformation, which was a beauty salon, into where I'd have workshops and I would read. And, and then that just grew. I wrote my first book and I got a television show. I, I mean, Spirit's been very good to me by lining everything up. And I look at them as opportunities and to take them and grow with it. So take us through like what you feel and because this is so different for so many of us, we don't see or feel what you see. Like how, how does it feel? Like you, you, you know, you'll sit, you, I remember you mentioning also sometimes you'll sit like at dinner and, and there were times where people would like think judgmental thoughts and you would feel it and it would like hurt your feelings and you can, yeah. you can like really pick up on everything. Yeah, I can read people's minds. They call that a gift, but there's another side to that. <laughs> yeah, I can you know, imagine not that. Not everybody is thinking pure, innocent, nice thoughts. That was disheartening to find. But I also yeah. work as a health intuitive, and I find as working as a health intuitive, I get a sense of satisfaction and completion when you can give quality or quantity to someone. You know, that's mm -hmm. something I pride myself on. And also, I really love working with children and counseling children that are gifted as I was. And there wasn't really anyone to guide me through that except for spirit. But that's why I believe I have such a strong bond and connection with the spirit is because I always listen to them. I see, yeah. I hear, I feel, I smell, and I taste. And I'm one with Father, Mother, God, Holy Spirit. 
and that's very diversified. And then throw in there as a health intuitive. I also work murder cases, but that's like really walking through a nightmare, you know, on Elm Street. It's yeah, not, I can imagine. That would scare yeah. me. It is scary. It's not something that's fun, but it brings peace and closure to the family. And also yeah. uh, sometimes those spirits that go out real fast, sudden, unexpected, they haven't worked their way up to the heavens. They're earthbound. Sometimes right. I'm confusion, sometimes I'm choice. So I also try to help that soul, that spirit, get to the heavens and show them the way and encourage them and let them know they're not going to be judged. God is a judging God. God is a loving God, a good God, a great God. This is really just one of our journeys out of many, uh, you know, incarnations as well as other places that we've been. Yes. And one thing that I've noticed, and I've always like really been drawn to information or people like you or, or reading about people like you or reading what you see that we don't see. Cause typically most people, if you really look at the majority, we live like in a mundane existence of just like day in day out. And, and there's like, and every so often when we have conversations or I find if I have conversations like this about spirituality, I almost feel like there's like a little bit of a magic it, it, energy. Yes. Yes. And it kind of, it's like a high vibration and I light up and I feel like the other person lights up and it feels really good. Yeah. That's and, exactly. Yeah. And another thing is, uh, so I, I've been meditating because I, I want to, I would love to evoke that. And I do believe that all of us have it. It's just a matter of how to listen and kind of go within and what I'm finding is that when you allow it, when you said like you, you acknowledge the messages and you listen. Yes, I do. The more you listen, the more they'll probably speak, I would imagine. Exactly. Just like- and you build up a very strong bond of trust and you know where to go, not outside of yourself, but rather, as you said, meditate When you meditate, you're really being open to spirit and they give it to you however you can receive it the best. You know, whether you're clair audio, clairvoyant, everybody's different. But prayer is when we're speaking to spirit, it raises our vibration. Meditation is when we're listening to spirit, it raises our vibration. And really, that's the only thing that I do besides working with photos. And I like to see people's eyes because that's the window to your soul. So I'm not looking at the surface of someone. I'm looking into them. Yes. Yes. And, you know, and it's interesting when you see what I think just something that came to my mind, you know, since I've seen you, my father's passed and I was with him. And it's interesting. I'm I'm so happy. Like, I think that I'm happy that I'm spiritual because if I wasn't spiritual and didn't believe in what I believed, I would have been so much more, I would have had so much more suffering and letting him go. And like, what was interesting to me, you know, as uh, to see, have having seen a baby's eyes when they look into the distance, yes, that same gaze is what what I saw with my father as he was transitioning. It was wild, and you could see this bliss, and it's just kind of like looking into this distance, but you, they're looking at something. It's just not here. Well, they see our auras and they get fascinated with the color babies. They see their guardian angels. They see their spirit guides. Mm -hmm. So they're always looking. And what people don't realize is most souls don't enter the baby's body until the actual time of birth. Mm -hmm. Then the soul becomes one with the body. And that's how we have life, how God ordains life. And as you said, everyone's intuitive but it's really a matter of fact they have free will. Are they going to listen to it or are they going to shut it down? And most people, they've had an experience where the intuition has said something, don't get in the car. Uh, the day that I had the car accident, I wasn't driving, but I knew very clearly not to get in the car. Mm-hmm. Two hours later, my family talked me into it. And sure enough, we had a head on collision. So, Even at that time, you know, I didn't listen to spirit, but my life was still spared. And then being that I changed places, seats with a friend of mine and he died on the impact. That that to me, if somebody gave up their life so I could Mm. stay to do this work. And so for me, 
that means a lot that I follow through and help as many souls as I can. And you have, I mean, I, I, I'm just one person and I'm sure that there's so many, uh, there's so many people probably that have had such grief and such un, unspoken words and, and to have that peace and that closure, there's nothing more soothing than that. And, and, and I think to myself, um, we're talking about the baby and that alignment with the soul, um, it's interesting because, well, before that, actually, I wanted to talk about what you just said about listening to the signs. A lot of the women listening to this podcast are going through fertility journeys. They're going to doctor's offices. They're being told um, things that they know deep in their mind and their heart isn't true, like these diagnoses that they're given. And they see these people as professionals and they don't know what else to do or who else to turn to. It's sad. And, and and it is, it's sad. And it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's that trusting, like if something inside of you tells you that's not true, it's like you said, you, you listen to that. Yeah. Well, I'll give you an example. The doctors told me that I would never have kids at two different times. I have two healthy boys. Wow. So if I was listening yeah, to yeah. the doctors, I would end up probably, you no, know, but it just goes to show you the power of spirit because our children actually pick us as parents mm -hmm. and they review uh, this, the lifetime before they actually come into existence. And they choose their parents based on not only karmic debts, but spiritual lessons uh, also because you pa have usually past life history. So it, it's so many things that go on throughout life. It's just really important for people to be open-minded especially these days because we have a lot of souls leaving the planet. Mm -hmm. Infertility is at the highest rate ever. And so many people are now going to the specialists, you know, for in vitro. And, you know, I, I think it goes back to faith and a conviction and certainty in God and in spirit. Like you said, knowing, okay, this baby's going to come to me with divine timing. We may, we may not get it exactly when we want it, but if spirit says that a baby's coming through, I just told a friend of mine that has three kids and I was on a trip with him and I said, I can't say the name obviously, but I said, I see a, a little boy around you. And he's looking at me like, oh yeah, you're crazy, Michelle. But I ended up sending a text. She's pregnant. It's a boy. <laughs> oh, wow. That is, just, I just got the chills because you did that to me. <laughs> when I came in, I was, I had my first child and she was one years old and um i showed you a picture of her and you had described her and then you said you have a reservation uh, you know it's a blu-ray a blu-ray child and i said is that is that what my daughter is now and you said no and and it's a different energy it's a different place it's a different and i remember thinking oh that's interesting you know so of course i read about it and and i when she was born actually it's interesting that you say blu-ray her eyes my eyes are brown. My husband's eyes are hazel. Her eyes are blue, blue, and she's blonde and she's very pale. Like yeah. it was kind of an interesting, but very sensitive and open. Yes. Yes. Most of us as psychics, uh, I just refer to myself as a spiritual medium, but I'm very sensitive mm -hmm. and that can be a gift, but that has a double-edged sword as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. dealing when you deal with people day in and day out, which is what I do. I know but, it's, it takes a lot of energy. It does. It takes a lot of energy. It, it can be taxing, but you, you have to know when to, you know, baby up Scotty, I say. And then by the time I'm done with the day's work, I have to try to ground myself. And what I do is I use mother earth to ground myself. I'll walk, you know, in the yard in the back and on the, I live on a body of water. So that helps as well. The elements and Mother Earth helps to take on energy that we've taken on from others and she neutralizes it. Plus, yeah. she's always giving her bounty. So that's something else that I think a lot of psychics or mediums, we have to have a healthy outlet to express ourselves besides just reading for people or, you know, in my case, I do a multitude of things. And by the way, I'm working on two more books. One's a children's oh, yeah. book. And the other is uh, Ask White Dove 2. So those will be released this year. 
God willing. I look forward to it because I really enjoyed your books a lot. Um, I remember She Talks with Angels, and then there was two of them. Two of the Angels books. Angels are talking. That was the blue cover. Angels. Yeah. Yes. And um, it was just so fascinating to get the perspective of, of somebody who sees something that we don't. Because here's another thing that, you know, something that I think about, and I think the more I meditate, the more I realize this, this truth is that there's no such thing as, as something bad. That's what I've kind of, that's like a human perspective. Exactly. It's really about our choices and our Mm -hmm. intent first, the choices that we make. I mean, look at the law of karma, what we do unto others, we do to ourselves tenfold. That's enough to keep me in line. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. (laughs) I, I, that's for sure. You think about it. And I feel like, I feel like in a way it's kind of good. I feel like my karma is much more close to me because I do feel like it's probably this like, like a really long, a huge circle. And for some people where they have a lot, I think it's, it, it takes longer to come to them. So they think they're getting away with things for longer. <laughs> well, that's true. That's Little true. do they know, but mine is like right away. Like if I misunderstand somebody or judge somebody like within I feel like at, at the most a year it'll happen to me and I'll realize it. And I'm like, Oh <laughs> crap. That's my that was, yeah. that was, you know, I did that and I didn't realize, you know, but, um, but it does, uh, it, it is a thing. Karma is real. <laughs> oh, karma is very real. Uh, everything is written and recorded. And that's like when we return to the heavens, we have like a life review and evaluation. But first we have a meet and greet, I call it, a home welcome party. And then we go into uh, reviewing and evaluating our life. Like what joy did we give? What pain? What did we learn? Did we learn the lesson of forgiveness? Uh, that's a hard one for humans to get. Or the lesson of the illusion of death, rejection, loss, abandonment. And when we have our life review, we are judging ourselves. God's not judging us. We are judging ourselves because now we have the truth of everything. We actually will become the other partner. Let's say you're reviewing your life. You will experience what your partner, your husband, was experienced at that time and moment based on your words and your deeds. We don't fully get that until we cross over. And then after our life review and evaluation, we go into a place of healing. And for every soul, it's different depending on how evolved they are, what level of consciousness that they are at. That's amazing. And you had mentioned that um, a lot of people are dying and it's true. You hear about it all the time. Like, I don't remember, you know, when I was younger, hearing so many celebrities pass away. Like, it's just, it seems like every day you hear something. And then what's crazy is I feel like fertility challenges are on a rise. Yes, they are. So how do you explain that from spirit? I'll explain that in a couple of ways. First of all, there aren't very many souls that are choosing to come in at this time. We're getting ready to go through a cleanse, a purging, and the souls that do come at this time are very, very special because they're extremely evolved and they're here to help us to get away, to get ahead, to evolve. Uh, especially indigo children. The other reason why we have a high uh, infertility, it has a lot to do with the food that you eat, the medication that you take. Uh, Oh, goodness. Medically speaking, you know, in some women, they just can't conceive naturally. But it has a lot to do with that. So Mm -hmm. look at it from both perspectives. Right. So it's it's from a physical perspective. It's from from a spiritual perspective and – I've spoken to this one lady who, who she's um, a fertility yoga teacher. She has a a yoga center in New York city and she for a long time has gone through fertility challenges. And at one point she just said, you know what? I think she ended up leaving the relationship and she went and got a house on, um, on the beach, like a little tiny house or cottage. Right. And she just took time off and just kind of cleansed and really went within And what's crazy is after years of doctors telling her she couldn't get pregnant on her own, she got pregnant at 46 with a healthy pregnancy. And she was ready. She said, I aligned. I needed to get broken open. I needed to align with the spirit of my child. Like I I needed to elevate myself. That's beautiful. That's very well said. That's amazing. 
That's beautiful. You know, that's the new age where people are having babies. The new age is in the 40s. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I mean, who would yeah. think, right? But yeah. a, lot, a lot of the women that are in their 40s, some of them do use doctors, you know, to beef up their eggs or, or do in vitro. But then again, there are some that are just have finally let go of maybe not trying so hard to have a baby. They surrender. And yes. this happens later on down the road, which is a beautiful thing. Right. And how do you explain that? Like, you know, from spirit's perspective, people try to force something and then as soon as they let go and they just surrender to it, everything flows. It goes into, yeah. I always say let go and let God in. And it's about divine timing. And we are always trying to push things, you know, up before their time. We want what we want. And that's the ego. I, I, me, 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 I call it. Yes. And when you get out of the, that box or that circle, and as you evolve spiritually, it's just a win-win, not only for that person, but for the family, because you're setting an example. You're learning to listen to your intuition versus your ego, your head, because that's the problem. So many people are caught up in their head and the day-to-day -day distractions are, are life, as we want to call it, that they're not focusing on their spiritual self or evolving further. So I'm finding that people are becoming more open-minded and people are coming away from man-made religion and they're looking for something that's bigger, that's greater, that they know they're a part of, and that's spirit. Yeah, and what's interesting too is that after doing this, after a while, I've spoken to a lot of women who are in the field of fertility, you know, wellness. It could be a lot of different ways, either nutrition or yes. coaching. Yes. And it tends to be women who have gone through their journey, their own fertility journey. And they say, they look at it now in hindsight. At the time, they were very angry at the situation. But in hindsight, they wouldn't change a thing. That's number one. They wouldn't change a thing because they say the, the child that I have is exactly the child I needed to have. And it yeah. wouldn't have happened otherwise. And it was kind of like a calling. It was like life called on them to do that. And then they can use their story to inspire so many women out there. Yes, I, I agree with that completely. For example, I even did uh, in vitro, unfortunately, to no success. But uh, you know, Spirit said, you have to. You should be happy with what you have. They're two miracle babies. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I got it. Uh, yeah. So it hasn't chose to come through. But when I look at my life and I look at my schedule, it's really about people across the globe that I help. And where would I fit, like, at this point in my life, a baby right now? You know, it's just something I wanted. But... God said, I have a higher calling, a bigger calling, and my boys are now grown. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm still very much fulfilled. That's why I love working with children, especially children that are gifted or the indigo children, because a lot of times the parents try to shut them down or the school mm -hmm. tries to shut them down or man-made systems. This isn't the average. This isn't successful. Your child is looking in the... Uh, not paying attention to the teacher, but looking out the window, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I find that our public schools just want to drug all the kids up ADD or mm -hmm. ADD, yeah. instead of realizing, get out of your box, get out of your circle. Every That's soul right. is different. And so I'm very excited about the new babies that are coming in because they really are like going to be our leaders and our saviors and they're going to work with humanity so it's nice to know that the souls that are coming through, this is why they're coming through at this time. Right. And and so there's a difference between indigo and blue ray and crystal. Because well, indigo indigos could be tough and they're really there to like break apart the bad patterns that we have. True. Yes. So uh, adults don't know what to do with them. <laughs> they don't know how to, and their ego gets offended, you know, when they get questioned and you know what I mean? Oh yeah. That's well, kind of interesting. <laughs> I will say this, uh, in this line of work, our ego is not our friend. You literally have to thank your ego for graciously moving over and allowing your higher self, your God part self to govern you. 
And when you trust emphatically in spirit, it's a conviction, a certainty of knowing you can never go wrong. You just need to follow that, that voice or that gut. As you said in the beginning, everybody's different. I find some mediums, they hear, but they don't want to see, you know, mm. that freaks them out, which I think is funny. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> or some will just say, I know, I just know it's a gut feeling. So, you know, everybody is different in their gifts, but nonetheless, everyone is intuitive and they can certainly develop that over time. So for people who want to get into their intuition, I hear this a lot. Like, how do I know? I know this because I meditate and I think that there's that subtlety and maybe that's going to be really the answer is getting quiet. But, you know, people always ask, how do you know whether it's a thought or it's an intuition? Because it's the first thing that comes to you. You didn't think about it. You didn't mull it over. You weren't being analytical. You didn't go ask your best friend. It was just Mm. boom, you know? Right. It just like pops in your mind. Exactly. Yeah. And you feel it in your body too. I do. As a health intuitive, for example, I, I just got finished doing a reading I will literally take on the ailments. Uh, let's say my client wanted to get in contact with not only uh, his father, but his wife. And I literally took on the heart issues that his father had, that spirit's way of saying, okay, he passed from a heart attack or a stroke. So I'll endure that for a short period of time. So yeah, it's amazing. People go, how is this possible? You know, you're on the phone. We're so many miles away, the, the time and distance. And I always say it's irrelevant, the time and distance. There is no time and distance in spirit. You know, we're, mm. we're multidimensional beings. We just need to wake up, spiritually speaking. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting because, yeah, space and time, they say, is it, it's a, it's an illusion. It is. And what was interesting to me is that if you take babies, they don't understand space and time. They're, they're the closest to heaven. And when my father was transitioning, he – it was very hard for – you know, the doctors would always ask him, like, what date is it? And he would have a very hard time figuring out where he was – and what time or date it was. Those are the two things that started fading out. He knew me. He recognized me. He he connected with me. There was not, I think, I, I thank God for that, that he knew me the whole time. Oh, that's Because you know, some people don't have that. No, a lot a of gift. people do. So, you know, it's interesting that, uh, that that faded out as he was transitioning. It's just such a, it's sacred, you know, death even. It is. We, we we try to we try to reject it and we resist it but there's something so sacred about it when you truly like allow the process to unfold and you're there with somebody you love there's something very sacred about it it is i mean like you said you're seeing that transition it sounds like to me your father was already half in and half out meaning one foot here on the earth plane and one foot in the spirit world and so that was what his mind wasn't all there, whether that was dementia or Alzheimer's, that mm-hmm. was a part of what he was going through. That wasn't all of his issues. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Right on. He had, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was definitely of the brain. He passed away of the brain. It was, um, a bleed that ended up, but, uh, but probably a little dementia and also some strokes and, so it was kind of like that, just like you, you nailed it as you always do. <laughs> it was one foot here, one foot there. It was yeah. like that's when yeah. the soul gets tired. People will ask me a lot of times, well, why do people have dementia or Alzheimer's? And what they don't know is that the soul is tired. They want to go home, but it's not yeah. actually their death date yet. You know, God ordains life, gives it, and takes it. And it's certainly uh, death is not prejudiced to gender or age or you know any of that. It's all about timing again and how far that we've come in this lifetime. We will contract different lessons that we need to learn, different people that we need to reconnect to, uh, our karma, you know, that follows Mm -hmm. us also from past lives to this incarnation, we can say. And I think what people really need to do and they don't 
is give the allow you to have that open mind and that space and place that's sacred where you can pray and you can meditate. You don't have to go to church. It's, mm-hmm. it's really where your heart is and your mind. And God already knows what's in your heart, your mind, and your soul. But at least you're making the effort to have a closer relationship with spirit. And then meditating, I always do an open meditation where I know spirit knows what I need better than I know. So I'm just open to receive whatever they give me. And then I act upon that. I love that. It's it's amazing. And what do you see? Like, you know, it's the whole intrigue of, of alignment and the souls choosing their parents. I know everybody's different, but what do you find is the reason why souls choose particular parents? And do you find that sometimes they do choose them and then the parent goes through fertility challenges and the soul waits but, for that perfect timing? Exactly. Sometimes it's, it's just about the divine timing. We try to force things and it's about when that soul is ready to come through. And the soul that's making a reservation will say, is choosing you based on the lessons they need to know. They get to know you as a mother, as a father, before they even get here or, or, you know, that time of the soul entering the baby's body at birth. So they've chose you based on the karmic needs, based on the spiritual lessons. And in your case, I mean, you have at least one child. I know that's Indigo. And by the way, I have to say this, you have, advanced so much since whenever I read from you or talked to you, I don't remember, <laughs> but I can tell you remember. That, yeah. Oh, wow. That you have really made a lot of um, growth. So, so that's impressive. You should give yourself credit for that. Thank you for that. That means so much to me. I've made a conscious effort and I thank you for validating it because yeah, I've made a conscious effort to grow. And you know what? (laughs) Everything will be easier. You know, it's like you're going with the flow. I always say, Spirit, whatever rocks or stones you lay before me, I turn them over and look at it as an opportunity of growth or an opportunity to reach maybe more of the masses. Because really, light workers, we're here to shine our light, but we're here to live our life like a prayer. And we're here to help people in a loving and a good way. Uh, God, right. we have enough darkness is rampant. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's hurtful in a way to see so many light workers shutting down because they're overwhelmed. We have to always have hope and faith. If God does, then we should have that same hope and faith, not only with ourselves but with our sisters and brothers. Beautiful words. Uh, my God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's just, it's about loving each other. And I think that we're happier together. That's really what it comes down to. You, we're social beings. We we need each other. We do. We're all we need each brothers other. and we all come here to be loved unconditionally and to love unconditionally. But you'll find some souls that say, I love you. Does he have a, oh, let's see, a Corvette. Does he have a lot of money? What does he look like? No, no, no. That's not how it works. <laughs> it's what you No. <laughs> It doesn't last. No. <laughs> That's for sure. Because it's not real. Exactly. <laughs> but what's interesting too is um I was watching, I don't know if you've seen there's a Netflix documentary with um uh Morgan Morgan Freeman. Wow, I haven't seen about that. God. What was the name of it? It's about God and he does these like series about uh like you know about learning from different religious perspectives about God. Oh, that's- and he'll talk to Buddhists and he'll talk to <clears throat> Christians and Muslims and Jewish people, like every, you know, just all across the board. And what was interesting, I've always been very drawn to Taoism and like Buddhism. And he spoke to this lady and she was Taoist and she does like astrology, but it's kind of in their own way. Right. And, she said something that I just really, I thought about when you just talked about this, about going with a flow. She said, birds don't fly, they're flown. Oh, that's well said. That is very well said. Yeah. That's powerful. That 
she really got it, meaning that that's governed by spirit. That's beautiful. Yes. When you really have that, and it's and I work on this every single day when I meditate, that full trust, and you must have developed that trust so well. I think that really it comes down to trusting the universe. Absolutely. When you really give that trust, that trust is like a window to allow allow spirit in. Absolutely. If spirit knows that you're afraid, they never want to like say, for example, show up at the foot of your bed because you'll have, just about have a heart attack, at least most people, right. and then slam the door on spirit and shut down. So spirit works with you as quickly or as slowly as you want to work because they have to yeah. honor our free will, which is a gift, but there's another flip side to that as well. Because a lot of um, souls, let's say they were brought up in Catholicism, they're they're basing their life on these man-made rules and laws that aren't really the truth. It's it, it should come from the top, from spirit, not outside of yourself. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's interesting you say from the top. I always say like there's vertical knowledge and horizontal knowledge. Horizontal, you get from, you know, legacy, learning from family, you know, things kind of carry, get carried down or influence of other people. And that vertical knowledge is, is what you're always connected to, which is spirit. That's correct. I don't have an off button. I prayed about it. And spirit said, why would we give you an off button? You would just push off and you'd sit on the couch and eat bonbons. <laughs> well, bonbons are good. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, you're not going to get any work done, Michelle. I'm like, okay, I'll just keep on moving along. So what you do to get grounded is just to have a daily meditation, walk on the ground, like feel the earth. Yeah, and, and food helps to uh, also ground me because I don't eat while I'm working. So food is another resource. Yeah. Also just kind of like, you know, sh- shaking off the taint, I call it out of my shine. I don't like it when people take the shine mm-hmm. and those kind of people I just stay away from. I think that that's the best thing to do. <laughs> Absolutely. But you wouldn't you would believe how many people try to rush or push into a relationship that's so toxic mm-hmm. that, you know, just in common sense, I would think they'd get the memo, but <laughs> they don't. So that's the young ones. No, it's so true. Like uh, there's this thing, I guess, like where people feel guilty. They feel like they need to help other people, but they don't realize that those other people are actually bringing them down. And whatever they give those people isn't really going anywhere. Exactly. Well and then said. Draining them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I call them Debbie Downers, or just you know, I just go the opposite direction, bless them, laugh and you pray. Have to. And I mean, it, you almost don't have a choice. Because you can't afford to, to have your energy sucked. <laughs> you need your energy yeah, I, to do important I call work. Them vampires, vampires that suck all the energy and, and light and wisdom from you. And yeah. so actually uh, different couples, let's say that are married. Uh, when I go to do a reading, I'll talk to the, the wife and I'll say, you know, your husband is like, living off your energy and your light. And they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you said that because it's so true. <laughs> yeah. And, and what I find though is sometimes when you are in a situation where you can't really leave or right. it's like a parent or what I found though, and I found it in my own life is when I started meditating, when I started grounding and when I started to kind of claim my energy, those people stopped trying to take my energy. It, it wasn't a, they didn't find a weak spot. Like they did in the past. Just, I always say shield up every day, pray yeah. up, you know, use the Metatron prayer. That That's a very powerful prayer. The that, Metatron. Yeah. The Med- Med- Archangel Metatron gifted me that prayer. It's a uh, protective physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and it's abundant physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And when he gave it to me, I asked why. And he said, you need to shield up. You have, you know, so many people coming at you from so many angles. And it was really more, I thought at the time about protection, but I asked him very quietly and very humble. I said, is it okay if I share this prayer with the world, with my clients, with my students, with the people? 
And he was very quiet. And then he said, yes, you can, but very few will utilize and reap the rewards from that prayer. Mm. And to this day, it's true. That prayer has been up there for years. And very few people have taken that prayer and used it. But for those that have, it's completely changed their life in That's a good way. Amazing. And so where can they find that? Is that on your website? Because I'm, I'm going to put the, your website and information on the episode notes. Yes, it's on michellewhitedove.com, uh, the homepage. And you'll see where I recommend it says Metatron. You can actually p- print the prayer out. Awesome. And by the way, I love your blog. Every so often I go in and, and see what you're saying about that because you really, you talk about current events, um, celebrities, what's happening in the world. It's really nice to read. It's interesting. <laughs> he can't say it's like juicy. I'm like, what? What's going on here now? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> when I do the celebrity predictions, I really try to keep it as positive as I can because I think about it going Oh, I don't want somebody out there writing something about me that's not good. Yeah. You know, that's karma in itself. So I always try to keep it upbeat and positive. So is there something that you feel people today out there, listeners, should pay attention to that they're not that you've seen that they haven't they're not quite seeing or getting? It's this they're not waking up spiritually, they're not applying it to their daily life. They're not living their life like a prayer. Uh, they, they say, oh, this is what I believe, Michelle. This is what I know. But are they acting on it? You know, you have to go through the physical emotions. It's about we're all co-creators. Our intent should be pure. Then what we think about, we bring about. What we visualize, you know, seeing it, your third eye. Then we speak it. We invoke it into matter. And then we get off our butt and we do it. So and it's really just that simple. How, how, like, what should people do or incorporate, like, journaling, meditation to, to really journaling, get in with that? Journaling is really uh, important. That's another form of channeling. Uh, also, I you would, every day I have to tell people, pray, meditate. But, but people go, Michelle, can't you just do it for me? I <laughs> said, I can pray for you, but you guys got to do the work. Or how else are they going to learn? You know, we experience pain, but then we also know joy. And we experience light and sometimes even darkness. So it's it's about not the beginning and the end so much as it is about the journey and how you get there. Right. I love that. Living like a prayer. That is such a beautiful, I love yeah. that. And when you do live your life that way, people do start to listen to you and they see your light. And they're attracted to it. And they're like, wow, you, you you feel so good. Whenever I talk to you, you make me feel so much better. But that's because I'm always trying to come from a loving, compassionate, and sensitive to that person's needs. And, you know, my I've been doing this for so many years. My life is really about the service of humanity. But we have so many souls that are sleepwalking. And they're going to be lost sheep sent off to the slaughter if they don't wake up soon. And that's why you're also seeing a lot of people leaving the planet, which is shocking. Uh, You know, every household is almost experiencing a loss. And Spirit said that that's going to continue to happen throughout this year, the next few years. And so it's these last little souls that are coming in that uh, represent our future. And they're here to help us get to that next level. And and so is this kind of like a birth that we're experiencing labor pains? Like a rebirth. Yeah. You know, and what is there is there a light at the end of this tunnel? Because so much so much crap is happening in the world. It's crazy. Darkness is rampant. Make no mistake about it. They try to flip you or take you out. But that's why I always encourage other light workers to get up, shine your light. Because wherever there is light, there cannot be darkness. Mm. And you also should never engage or bow down or entertain darkness. Yeah. I'm with you on that, I, 100%. I, I say that always. Even thoughts, I just, just go towards the light. Light thoughts, positive thoughts. That's our hope, is yeah. the light, the love, spirit. 
And another thing also that came to mind is intention. What you oh, just yeah. said, intention, what's your intent? And and I say that sometimes even to my patients that come in, what's your intention? Are you trying to fill something? Are you trying to bring more joy into your life? What is the intention in starting a family? And the same thing happens when you start a relationship. Is there intention to get attention from somebody or is your intention to love and connect? What's the intention at the core? And you really, I don't think a lot of people think about that. Like go back backwards and say, is that a pure intention that you're starting this want or desire with? <laughs> no, that's beautifully said. And that, that plays a major role is what is our intent? For example, I've had some people get in my energy or want to work with me, but I knew that their intention was more like an agenda to use me or uh, piggyback off me, if you want to say. <laughs> and you just have to really take a look at that person and shut it down. And they move on or they fall down based on their own karma because I'm a firm believer what comes around goes around. In these days, you notice it's a rapid pace. It's like time. A week goes by. And for me, it's like a day. That's how mm -hmm. it feels. And yeah, so time is speeding up for sure. Yeah, it's a quickening. So time will become irrelevant uh, as it already is. It is truly an illusion. Yeah. Oh my God. It was so great to have you. I can't tell you, I was so excited to have you. And it was kind of like, um, it's interesting too. It wasn't, you know, how you just talked about like intuition. It wasn't coming from my thoughts. It came from my being. And I was like, I'm really excited to talk to her. I was really excited to have you on. I just think that Thank you're you. so amazing at what you do. And I've always followed you. I've watched you on America's top psychic was it oh, yeah. yeah i she won of course but i was like watching it with my mom my mom was we were blown away <laughs> that was if pretty anybody challenging could. let me tell you that that last challenge about finding somebody in 10 acres spot on i was like i i, I, oh, wait. I couldn't believe it I, the red car i was like what oh, yeah what? Actually, Spirit <laughs> gave me that information before I ever got to Hollywood and filmed. They had already told me about the test and, and what color the car would be and to it's follow incredible. through. Incredible. I mean, it was mind blowing, honestly. And, and it was interesting seeing you. I, I felt the challenge that you were going through. There were some interesting personalities there. I'll say. And, and some were not very pure. And, no, no, no. you know, to be kind. <laughs> <laughs> and it was interesting to see how you had to go through that because you're there. You can't like just leave and go on your own and kind of have your own space. No, in no, this, no. this challenge, it literally was a challenge. Now, if people were to want to watch this, how can they access it? Is there is it on Netflix or? Is it? Uh, let's see, America's Psychic Challenge, YouTube, YouTube. Yeah, you guys gotta watch it. You guys got to go and watch it. It's it's so good. And also uh, Lilydale. That was... Um, oh, yeah, the documentary, No One Dies in Lilydale. I loved it. I loved it. And I love the fact that they're like, oh, you know, I can speak to my grandma anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, that would be awesome. But I but I do. I speak to my grandmother all the time. Yeah. Our loved ones are around us, and they send their love and light and their prayers, and They'll even show up in our what we call our dream time, but it's the spirit world. So we have little powwows also with our guardian angels and our spirit guides. And the more that you get to know who your helpers are, the more closely you can work with them. And, and so how you, do you know who your helpers are? Do you ask questions, ask for signs? Yes. Um, I, I always say to them, I want to know what you look like. I want to know your name. I want to know why you're assigned to me so that I can work more closely with them. And over time, they will give it to me. I pretty much know all of my helpers, my angels, my spirit guides. A lot of times people will say, oh, is this voodoo hoodoo? Or you reading really tarot cards? And I'm like, no, 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 it's nothing like that. It's just I was born this way. It's all I know. And it's through prayer and meditation. Uh, the only tool that I work with is photos. And the, I told you why. Because the eyes never lie. They truly mm. are to your soul. Yeah, absolutely. And um, 
Oh, I remember you telling me that I had an Asian, old Asian man, which is interesting because I studied Chinese medicine. <laughs> but you he's told a me that one of, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was a, it was a healer, right? It was a healer, yeah, old a healer. Yeah. He's still with you. Oh, I love you, Asian man. <laughs> I feel I feel somebody guiding me. I feel a lot of people guiding me. But oh my God, this is just. First of all, this is a topic that I could talk about for hours. <laughs> it's so interesting. It lights me up, and I love. I love you. I really do. I oh, do. Thank you. I, I always had a connection with you, and I'm so happy to speak to get to speak with you. And I think I might I might schedule a reading with you, another <laughs> one. <laughs> so. Thank you so much for coming on again. So you're, if anybody wants to find you, do you want to mention your website again? And I'm also going to have all that in the episode notes. Okay, cool. It's michellewhitedove.com for more information, books, readings, and my blogs. Also, they can go to Facebook, Instagram, my Patreon that um, is relatively new, which a lot of people have joined that, especially if you're interested in world predictions and, cryptocurrencies, all that information is in the uh, Ask Why Dove report. So that will be available for people. So, you know, I try to give as much information through my website and blogging where people can get that and not have to pay for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thank you so, so much. So reading the books I have also told them to do. Really shining a light. I know that you're a very sensitive soul. Yes. You have a purity about you. You could see it in your eyes. You could, you still have that childlike feel. And I know that sometimes you have to protect yourself, but you have to stay sensitive at the same time. Yes. <laughs> so it sounds like a contradiction, but it applies truly said. <laughs> so thank you so much again for coming on. Thank it was a true too. pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure as well. God bless you. And thank you so much for not only the painting, but having me on tonight. So that concludes today's episode. You can find all the links mentioned on the episode notes. If you're enjoying these episodes, please take a moment to leave a review. Reviews are everything to podcasters. You can find me on my website at www.thewholesomelotus.com. And please be on the lookout for my online course and program. This course has emerged from everything that I've been using for the fertility program I now offer at my office. I wanted to consolidate all of my suggestions and coaching and put it into a form that anyone can purchase and use. It was important for me to encompass key fertility health factors as well as guide you in implementing changes in your routine that are shown to boost fertility while being realistic and user-friendly. I will be offering this course with and without coaching. If you're interested and want updates as well as a free ebook on my top 10 fertility boosting habits, you can visit my fertility page on www.thewholesomelotus.com where you can find the subscription form. I thank you so much for listening in and hope you have a beautiful day 